Hi, I'm Mondell Lowe, and I'd like to welcome you to our little Hot Licks video session. Uh, I was thinking, coming out here from California, that I should tell you a little bit about my background, as sordid as it may seem. Uh, I was born and raised in the South, for the most part, on a farm, uh, like Tal Farlow and a few other pickers. And uh, f I went to uh, first, my first encounter was with uh, country music, with what we used to call cowboy bands. And then I found myself going to New Orleans quite a lot. I got interested in jazz and uh, came along World War II. And it was uh, headed for Guadalcanal. So being out there a few years, I got to play a little bit, not much. But when I came back, um, a friend of mine, John Hammond, had uh, suggested I join the Ray McKinley Band, which uh, turned out to be a wonderful experience. It had uh, Eddie Sauter writing the arrangements. And uh, McKinley, of course, was the band leader that took over when Glenn Miller disappeared and uh, led that Air Force Band until uh, the war was over. And from there, I, went, I worked with Benny Goodman, uh, Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey when they got back together. And then I worked in Cafe Society for quite a while, and then went to NBC, stayed there for, I guess, 11 years, and got hired by Columbia Pictures to be a composer, and out to the West Coast I went. Uh, I tried to do a lot of clinics and a lot of teaching with young students when I have the time. And as I travel around the country and do these things, I've become aware of the fact that a lot of students are interested in writing their own music, composing their own music. And I would like to talk about that at this time. Uh, I, among other things, am a 12-tone composer, which means that I've had to create a, what's called a tone row. That's 12 consecutive notes no particular intervals, but uh, wh whichever uh, you feel uh, best, but you must complete the 12 tones, which is every half tone in, in, a, in a scale, in an octave. So I picked, uh, again, on the plane coming out here, uh, from my row I picked tone number two, which turns out to be a C and tone number six, which turns out to be an A flat, tone number eight, which turns out to be a D sharp or E flat, and tone number 11, which turns out to be a D natural. And from those four notes, uh, which sound roughly I, like this, <laughs> when you play them t like that. Uh, I wrote a piece of music, which I think uh, would be uh, interesting for you to hear, using just those three intervals as the motif. And then we expand the motif. And as a matter of fact, I haven't finished uh, the com composition altogether. We will do that uh, when the band comes up. Uh, but in the meantime, the, the main motif turns out to be this. And from that, as I said, I expanded it, wrote a whole piece. And uh, Ben, if you would come up, let's play this right now. This is my friend Sal Salvador. A little applause from the back row there. <laughs> and Phil and, and Danny back there. Uh, let's just play this right now, OK? Three beats. And you decide whether you like it or not. One, two, three.
have a melody that I've written out. Uh, I'll give you some harmony, and if you will jot this in on your page right now. Um, F minor for two beats, B flat nine for two beats, E flat six for two beats, C seventh for two beats. The third bar, F minor seven for two beats, B flat nine for two beats. The next bar, E flat major seventh for two beats, E flat six for two beats. A minor for two beats, D seventh for two beats, G major seventh for two beats, and then on the third beat, a B minor chord, an E seventh chord, next bar, A minor for two beats, D seventh for a beat, A flat seventh for a beat, and then one beat apiece, G7, F major 7, E minor, A7 with a raised fifth. Okay? Let me check it out with you again. From, it, from letter C, two beats of F minor, two beats of B flat 9, two beats of E flat, two beats of C7, next bar, two beats of F minor, B flat, E flat 6, E flat major 7, E flat 6, next bar, A minor 7, D7, next bar, G7, major 7, third beat, B minor, fourth beat, E7, uh, the next bar, A minor 7, next beat, D7 to A flat 7, and then the last bar before letter D is G7, F major 7, E minor, and A7 with a raised fifth. Can we play that? You got it? Okay. Here's the bridge we just composed. Three, four. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, there you have a complete piece that was uh, composed mainly from that first motif that uh, I spoke about with the four notes and then expanded into a phrase, expanded into a section, and then expanded into a complete uh, piece of music. I hope you like it. I would like to encourage uh, music students, guitarists, uh, to get all the musical education that you can acquire before you get on into the real world, uh, playing the guitar for a living, or writing music, or a combination of all of these. Uh, you must remember one thing about playing my kind of jazz anyway. It's ear music. Uh, if you can't hear it, don't play it. Because if you can't hear it, the listener can't hear it. So train yourself to think musically all the time. Think lines, even sing them silently to yourself when you're playing jazz or when you're composing. Uh, there's a lot to be said about uh, harmonic forms that you can uh, get a lot from. For instance, ear music, uh, for the most part, falls into forms like uh, let's say two, five, one, that would be uh, 
uh, in the key of C, a D minor chord, G, C. Now, it's all 2, 5, 1, except we're going to modulate. We're going to keep modulating. And all of these progressions become 2, 5, 1. Two five one. Two five one. Two five one. So you can go all over this the spectrum of uh, of harmony, just doing that. And uh, and I encourage you, as I've said before, and will keep saying, write your own music. Uh, it's very gratifying, and it's it's also nice that when you write a piece that you really like, somewhere along the line, someone may record it. And you're driving along in a car, or you're walking down the street, and you hear your piece being played on a, a record or a television show. I've been through that, and it's a thrill, believe me. So, as I said, let me please underline that, encourage you to write and to play. Practice all you can. Study all you can before you hang up your shingle, I am a guitarist, because it's important. An important part of your education should be learning to accompany, whether it's a singer or whether it's an instrumentalist. But the art of accompanying is a great asset in terms of making money, and that's what it's all about, really. Having a little fun, making some money. If you're accompanying a singer, please try to at least know some of the key words that he or she will be singing because it'll help you in your, your construction uh, behind uh, a singer. If you're playing for uh, an instrumentalist, a saxophone, trumpet, whatever, uh, it's, it's the same thing, but uh, you can forget the words, of course. But listen very carefully to what they're doing. Compliment them. Do not uh, what's the word? Uh, compete. Don't compete. They are the soloists. You are the accompanist. When it turns around, uh, you're uh, soloing, then it's up to them to accompany you. But I thought we might, uh, my friend Sal Salvador is here, I thought we might uh, do a little piece, and I'll try to show you what I think accompanying uh, should be like. And this is... Uh, a piece that we're just making up, okay? I'll play you a, a bar, two bar cell.
I hope that was a good example for you, at least uh, it was a sincere attempt, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Over the years, I've had some uh, inquiries about uh, the fact that I use a D on the bottom. That came about uh, years ago from uh, reading some Segovia transcriptions with a D tuning. And uh, I started playing around with it and, and kind of fell in love with the sound of it. So I've used it now for almost 40 years. And it has great advantages. It's wonderful for accompanying people. For instance, if you want an F chord, uh, uh, an F chord would be uh, to put the, the root on the bottom and the fifth on the next string, and then you can do anything you want to from there on. Everything sounds wonderful. Whatever you add on top of that is a great sound. And it, it, uh, it really helps. It also gives you a, a nice uh, chance to, uh, to play a, a bass line that gets uh, uh, also, some other inversions uh, would be, uh, uh, this is an E-flat chord, E-flat, uh, F6, E-flat 6, D6. Uh, I'll play you just a little piece and, and try to show you the, uh, the uh, how the, the detuning helps me anyway. was a theme from a motion picture that I did years ago called Billy Jack. The, they used to say in motion pictures, the love theme. And uh, the, uh, I heard uh, Lorenda Almeida was kind enough to come in and, and play a course of that for me. And then we brought in the orchestra with the strings and the woodwinds and the horns. And, and uh, hopefully it made you cry a little bit. And, uh, uh, but. Uh, Getting back to the detuning, it can be advantageous if you explore uh, all the possibilities of it. Uh, you have to think, see, ordinarily an F chord would be voiced this way. My F chord is voiced upwards. So you have to think up a tone until you get that detuning into your head. And it's difficult. I spent a long time uh, trying to master it, and a lot of time I goofed on the air live or making a recording, and there's lots of apologies until I finally got it under my fingers and uh, it became part of my hearing, my music, musical hearing. So anyway, that's my little episode with the detuning. Uh, I think it would be advantageous to talk about, uh, let's call it reharmonizing a given melody using uh, uh, perhaps a little more sophisticated chords or chord substitutes 
things like that. Let's take uh, a very basic uh, harmonic example and we'll expand it. Let's see, the first one goes like this. That's G, E minor, A minor, D, which every guitar student probably knows. Now what would be, uh, let's see, how, how could we expand that? We'll do this. We'll add a little uh, substitute in the middle there, which is really a B chord, going to the E minor. A little E minor, E seventh, going to the A minor, to the D, to the G. So we have this. which uh, gives it a little more, let's say, modern sound than, uh, than the basic chords. Uh, a good exercise for that kind of thing I've found is a, a kind of a chromatic crawling up the neck, as it were, like this. from C all the way up to C. And let's name them as we go up. This is C major seventh, C sharp diminish, E my, uh, A, I'm sorry, D minor, D sharp diminished, E, uh, C with an E bass, F major seven, D seven with F sharp in the bass, G seven, G sharp diminished, A minor, B flat, major seven, B with a sharp nine, and we're back to C. But it's the chromatic, and it'll get your ear uh, used to using substitutes and, and a chromatic voice leading, let's call it. So I've, I found that very advantageous, even with uh, writing a piece of music uh, using roughly that. It might be something like this. But it's, it's a nice exercise to, to, to uh, get a feeling of progressing, progressing harmony up the fingerboard and uh, from, uh, for an octave. And uh, it, it sounds good to the ear. That's the main thing. As I said before, what we're playing is ear music. And anything that sounds pleasant would be a big help.